So this is uh, probably uh, uh, you know something that's staring at many of us: uh, empty classrooms. And uh, uh, you know, if, if there were a few students there also, they would probably be staring at uncertainty on what is going to really play out. Uh, in this semester, maybe and maybe this year, but uh, I'm hoping that it's not going to be for much longer than uh, a short period. So we've been also explain. Uh, short doesn't mean one year is not really short for many. I know, but uh, I mean in the in the scenario that's being painted out, I'm hopeful that it's not going to be really long term. Uh, issues that have fa that are being faced by uh, while teaching and learning online, we. I'm, I'm sure you would have, all of you would have your own experiences. Uh, we've uh, uh, done a little bit of an exploration and uh, we've largely found that, uh, uh, you know, students and faculty have talked about the lack of a visual and a personal connect because when you meet a student, there is a particular uh, kind of a connect through which you engage and relate to. Um, internet and connectivity issues are being spoken about because currently students are in various locations and uh, not everybody's uh, fortunate to have good access to uh, internet. There are faculty members who have been talk, talk, talked about, talked about, talked about, you to suddenly come to grips with uh, uh, so much online. I'm sure most of us were doing some things online, but suddenly there's so much that's happened online. Uh, how do you deal with teaching uh, technical subjects that actually require a drawing board? How do you teach some things like that? Uh, through this online medium. And of course, online assessments and juries is something that uh, we've been hearing. So if you were to look at um, the first one, uh, where we're talking about lack of visual and personal connect, uh, there are various ways in which we can build in some amount of it uh, 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 through the online uh, medium, where you're encouraging engagement uh, through the way you uh, probably teach, the way you incorporate discussions, quizzes, how you formalize attendance, how you get feedbacks, how you uh, encourage interaction between the uh, attendees and so on. Um, I'd like to demonstrate a small one just now. Uh, we'll do an a online poll uh, 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 where I, I think we'll have about 59 seconds to complete the poll. It's really, uh, we'd like it to be a rapid fire and not really you know, spending too much time on it. In 59 seconds, we will uh, close the poll and request all of you to certainly submit your uh, 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 your poll uh, choices. And at the end of it, we'll share with you the results as well. <coughs> so it's up there for you. I think it's all appearing for you. It'll be nice if you can spend some time. When do you think colleges should reopen? In cases, in case the colleges reopen, should they run for a full day? How many days in a week do you think is ideal in a current scenario? When the colleges reopen, do you think strength of each batch should be reduced and smaller sections be created? Should half the batch attend college on one day and another half on the other day and roles be uh, attend online and the roles be reversed every alternate day? When colleges reopen, should students have the choice of continuing with digital classes if they feel that is safer? Uh, we've come to the end of 59 seconds. If you can submit your poll, result, uh, poll choices, I think uh, Sonam will share with you the results as well. Sonam, shall I end the poll? 49, 50 or 74 have already voted, I think 51. Give them another 10 seconds. Yeah, should I end the poll? So we are at uh, uh, 54 have already voted, 71% have voted. I'm ending the poll. So um, Sonam is probably sharing the results with all of you. So we've got a result of when colleges should reopen. About 50% of you have said August. 31% say when there are zero cases. And 9% say not this year. And 9% say July. Uh, in case the college reopens, should they run for a full day? 24% say yes. 44% say no. 31% say I'm not sure. 
how many days in a week do you think is ideal? All days is 13%, alternate days is 63%, two days a week is 22% and one day a week is 2%. Do you think the strength of the batch should be reduced and smaller sections be created? 70% say yes, 17% say no, 13% say I'm not sure. And should half the batch attend college and another half attend online classes and roles be reversed? 63% say yes, 20% say no, and 17% say I'm not sure. Uh, should students have the choice to continue digitally? 74% say yes, 15% say no, and 6, 6%, 11% say I'm not sure. So that's, that's um, I'm just sharing the poll results for your yeah, so you could, uh, so this is just a way of kind of engaging the audience as well. And uh, if we were to look at uh, uh, how you, you know, you could create such polls or such quizzes while you're, while you're teaching in order to create that engagement. And I know it's still not a physical connect, but we have to make do with uh, what we can do best on that. As far as uh, internet connectivity issues are concerned, you could look at providing network dongles, monthly vouchers for the internet, or even like Baiju's does, preloaded tablets are something that uh, is, a, is, is something that's a possibility. Uh, many faculty members facing uh, issues with tech technology. I think faculty development programs need to be conducted for uh, faculty to be able to uh, uh, upgrade their skills as well. Uh, lectures can be recorded so that uh, live lectures are something that they can uh, uh, avoid the discomfort of if there is a problem. And uh, the use of laptops is something that could also help uh, them in understand. Um, so difficulty, difficulty in teaching technical subjects, I think uh, it's important to understand here that not everything uh, can be done online. It's something that we need to acknowledge and hence blended learning is something that we strongly recommend where things that need to be done live will need to be done live. Uh, so in cases right now, because it's difficult for uh, them to attend college, is there, is there a way in which they can understand uh, uh, how a window is fixed or a door is fixed and things like that through, through videos and stuff like that or through their own surroundings and uh, then they get down to uh, drawing. And uh, site visits, if, it, if possible, should be in small batches. We could do virtual tours. Uh, and so these are some of the tools that would be used uh, to uh, you know, bring about uh, ease in teaching technical subjects also with some amount of online. Uh, online design juries is something that uh, we've uh, been hearing from. I think that's, that's a huge problem that many of you have been facing on how to complete your semester through a online design jury. And this is something we have done even well before this. We've, we've held online design juries for certain colleges. And this particular uh, period, we've in fact facilitated it for uh, 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 quite a few uh, colleges as well. So uh, I'm going to just uh, give you a few tips on how a design jury can be planned online. And uh, uh, it's not going to really be an all out uh, solution as such, but a few tips and I think we need some more in depth uh, understanding. Later. So uh, what should students be given as a, uh, uh, as, as a uh, uh, information for them to present, make their presentations uh, in an online jury? I think uh, firstly aspect ratio needs to be 16 is to nine to ensure full screen and for clear understanding. Uh, the record, it's good to have the presentation pre-recorded uh, so that it allows for good time management. This is something that uh, having been part of so many competitions also, I find that some students are excellent at time management and they probably walk away with uh, a lot while others who've probably done some fantastic work are not able to complete their presentations on time because they get carried away when they're presenting live, you know, they're telling the story and you don't want to miss out any detail. So maybe a pre-recorded presentation is, is a way out uh, on an online jury. Um, scanning sheets and video recording, uh, uh, scanning existing sheets and like we said, video recording their screen share as well. And for better explanation of the design is something that could be used. 
uh, using 2D and 3D software to explain uh, for detailed understanding. In some cases, if your if your sketches, if your hand drawn sketches are not clear, it sometimes uh, stands out very well when you are able to do it uh, using using 2D and 3D software. Um, if sketching your design concepts again, sharing that, scanning that, and sharing that as part of the presentation is also something that. Uh, uh, gets the jury involved and uh, I think uh, they begin to see that there is, there is a lot more that's gone in than just uh, on the surface kind of a presentation. And graphics, I think uh, in this particular medium, very often we have a lot of text that I see on sheets that come to us. Um, and uh, unfortunately in an online, when, when there is a very restricted time uh, online and it's not as if it can extend uh, a lot. and uh, we do, I think we also do recommend sharing the uh, presentations prior with the jury members so they do tend, they could read the text but I think it's important to advise students to use more graphics than text and if you're using text to use fonts that are legible. So teachers, uh, what do we keep in mind uh, for an online jury? I think it's important to have prior preparations. Uh, it would be great if internal assessments that haven't happened so far can also be done online so the student and the faculty kind of get familiar with the medium and are not kind of uh, uh, thrown into the deep sea suddenly through a final jury. So if, if it is uh, uh, the case that internal assessments have already concluded, it may be a good idea to have a trial uh, uh, run because I think students are facing different kinds of anxiety and that's the third point that we're talking about supporting students as well. They're facing different kinds of anxiety when they're presenting. What if I overrun time? What if my internet doesn't work? Um, you know, what if I'm not able to handle questions? So uh, when they're having anxiety that a typical jury uh, is accompanied uh, uh, with, when they're doing an online jury, which is a new medium, I think uh, probably the anxiety is a lot more. So it may be good to do trials before so they are more comfortable. Uh, and I think it would be nice to give them that kind of support. Um, for the jury members, very often um, they may also not be very comfortable with this medium. So uh, a tutorial, maybe a trial session for them earlier to uh, allow them to understand how this whole process will work, how the student is going to share the content, uh, how are they going to mark, how much time they would get. So spend some time, maybe have a little debriefing session for the jury members as well. And uh, recommend strongly that the jury does not use tablets and mobile phones, but actually uses computers and laptops because it's only, you know, the, uh, uh, I think it's very crucial uh, period in the student's life. And uh, it's important that we give it 100% as a jury, as faculty, and of course the students themselves. So this was a little bit about uh, jury and I'd like to again come back to what I said a little while ago. I'm hoping and I'm very, very uh, strongly hopeful that this is not going to be a permanent scenario and it's, we're going to see better times very soon. Um, so uh, the Economic Times on May 14 said that there will be going forward a great opportunity to develop new forms of blended education that will be in much demand. Pre-crisis, there was already a growing demand for more flexible and blended forms of lifelong learning beyond initial education in order to address the need to upskill and reskill for the digital economy. And I think uh, this is the time, uh, this is, I, I know we are being fast forwarded into something that's kind of the unknown, but maybe it's a good time for us to use this opportunity to bring out the best of both the traditional skills uh, system of teaching and this new digital medium that has been uh, thrown at us to see how we can arrive at the best equation for the future even when uh, uh, life does get back to normalcy. There are things that, are, uh, that the digital offers which probably uh, the, uh, a live classroom may, may not offer and it's a good, good thing to adopt those now for blended learning. So I'm coming to the pros and cons. Uh, we as ASIC have been in the medium of uh, online learning for a bit. So my list of cons is kind of shorter than the list of pros. But I'm sure you will, you will be able to add more to the cons as well. But I think uh, 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 there are ways of mitigating those cons if we, if we really uh, uh, think deeply and, and uh, look at strategies to do the same. So if I was to look at the pros, we are talking about uh, uh, continued professional development. So you, you, you would be evolving as a uh, uh, faculty as you 
you know, as you teach more, the more you spend time on this, probably uh, you'll realize that there are skills that I don't know enough about. I'm not talking about technological and online skills, but even even uh, maybe uh, teaching skills, or you could probably learn a new fact that a fact or a new you yourself may want to take a course on something that excites you. So effective upskilling is something that uh, is possible when we uh, are looking at the online medium. Of course, FDPs have happened traditionally in live classrooms too, but I think uh, this this medium kind of uh, provokes you to. Uh, engage a little bit more in these uh, modules. Um, the ease of access to knowledge from reputed resources, universities and experts of the field is something that gets accessible. The danger of plagiarism and the danger of uh, copying is there. But I think uh, over time, uh, uh, right now, maybe the faculty sometimes is in the dark when plagiarism happens in class because we are not as adept as the uh, younger folk. But maybe we'll also start getting uh, smarter uh, if, if we are also in this, in this space. I think the evaluation is something we spoke about. It goes beyond uh, the typical assessments. You kind of start evaluating uh, uh, from different perspectives because you're probably looking at uh, uh, different kinds of learning also now. Uh, certification to improve the career profile of uh, students is something that uh, could happen through this because for every course that they complete, they could probably, like in ASEG, we do have downloadable certificates that come to uh, each of these students. The flexibility of time and learning at one's own pace. So in a classroom uh, kind of system, that's something that maybe some students find uh, difficult to keep pace with others. Uh, and also probably they are more hesitant to uh, participate in discussions and this medium probably allows them to uh, engage because they are probably engaging in a different manner here, uh, engage a lot more. And it's available on demand. So these are the pros. And I think the cons, firstly, I think there are certain things that cannot be replaced, like I said. So uh, uh, that, that is one thing that, uh, while I would call it a con of online learning, I think it's a pro of our field itself, that we have to do certain things live. And I think it's essential that they continue to happen live uh, to the extent possible and when possible. Uh, Teacher-student interactions for design discussions. Uh, are limited and are uh, more difficult. Uh, it requires a lot of self-discipline. There have been questions that come to us saying, how do you, uh, you know, make sure that a student is uh, uh, attending? So uh, even in the classroom, a student may be there, but how much he or she absorbs is something that could be a question mark. So here, I think uh, when they're learning at their own pace, maybe they, they, they do require that self-discipline. And I think uh, to instill that self-discipline, uh, creating a little more engaging modules would make bring them back every time. Inertia could set in and that's something we have to watch out for. 